Hey, today we're working on a Jeep Grand Cherokee 2012 model. It's got the 3 litre motor in it. And it's got the 5 speed W5A580 transmission in it. It's, it's very similar to the 7226. I'm just going to locate the OBD2 plug, which is under the driver's side or the right hand side. Above the pedals. Okay. One code found. And we got a PA741 torque converter clutch circuit. Now I'll just erase those codes. So when I change the solenoids, the same problem doesn't arise. Erase done. Okay, we're just going to have a look if there are any visible oil leaks a little bit hard to see with the stone guards so we're just going to whiz the stone guard off there the one that's under the transmission there Got the stone guard off now it looks pretty clean it's only done 130 odd thousand doesn't look like it's leaking on the cooling lines there And it looks pretty good. So I'll just take the rear bolts off, leave the front one on, and it'll just dribble out like that. Still a little bit warm from the test drive, so I'm just going to leave it for a few minutes. Now on these, before you take the pan off, just take this little bolt here off, just so you can get that bracket out. Otherwise, that bracket, or oh, that little heat shield where the plug goes in will stop you from lowering the pan. So the filter just presses into there, you can just wiggle it out. And then we're going to just pull this little tank, we'll blow it out first. Pull this little tank down and that will just push that plug out. And there's a, I think it's a 7mm bolt inside you've got to undo before you can pull that sleeve out and that sleeve goes into that conductor plate on top of the valve body so you've got to remove that before you can get the valve body out blown it all out we just grab that little tag there and pull it down and it'll click down and we just pull it out like that and then just give it a jiggle and there's there's the plug right out. Now inside there, I can't get the camera up there, there'll be a 7mm head bolt right in the middle of that plug. You need to undo that before you can slide that tube out. It's also a good idea while you've got this plug out now, to just give it a blow out. 7mm. You might have to just search for it. There we go. It's right there. And I'm just going to undo that now. Okay, I've loosened it. And I'll just undo it there. Sometimes you can feel a little click when it's to the end of that thread. And there it is there, I can feel a little click. Okay. And now we just wiggle that out. There we go. And that's a little sleeve. You can see the little bolt inside there. We 
we're just going to take off all these T30 bolts. Now that we've got that sleeve out, that'll just come down. And you can also see the little conductor plate there, and you can see the solenoids in there as well. Okay, I've left two diagonally opposed bolts, just a couple of threads in each, and I'm going to just whiz off the rest of them there. Undone it all, and you can see it's just loose there, just sitting on those two bolts. So I'm going to support it by hand now and just undo them and the valve body will just lower down. Got the valve body off. There it is, the top of it. You can see the solenoids. And the one that's throwing the code is this one here, the torque converter clutch. And I'll show you in detail what, what the rest of them are in a moment. I've got the two solenoids facing me. And the other two solenoids. Now you'll notice that these two are the same. You shift solenoids, one, two, and three. They're all the same, and this one's different. So there's three different types on this valve body. You've got two of these, three of these, and one of those. The 80s bulletin, and it just shows you um, where all the little plates go on the conductor plate. And you can see that's probably a better diagram. It's got the line pressure modulator, the pressure control solenoid, shift pressure control, two shift solenoids, and then you've got your torque converter clutch solenoid and your two three shift. And I'll just zoom in on the plug if you want to. Um, you can see what the resistances should be. And there's the conductor plate terminals. You can see also up here you've got which terminals you uh, test with your ohm meter while it's still in the vehicle. So that information might be handy as well. Now to get the conductor plate off, you've got to undo these little spring steel um, retainers here that hold the solenoids in place. So they're T30 as well which is convenient. So just take whiz them off. Now you just wriggle these out a little bit. And they should just pop out. A little bit hard to do with one hand. And now this conductor plate, you'll find that there are little clips there, so you just need to open those clips up and the whole thing will lift off. There's one of, one of the clips there. You don't need to force anything, it all comes off pretty easily, so I've just undone that little plastic clip there. And the other clip, it's just like a pin, a plastic pin in here, so you just wiggle it left and right and work it till it comes out. And there it is there. That's the little pin there. And there you go. Well, it's a good idea to be careful when you're pulling these off, just in case you decide to reuse it. Um, in this one, we're going to replace it, along with the solenoids. Now while we've got it out, you'll notice that the two pressure regulating solenoids have little filters screens in there. So it's a good idea to just make sure they're nice and clean. And also good to just nip up all these to the torque setting. But because it's already been operating in a car, make sure they're, they're not loose or, or anything like that's happened to them. The solenoid that was giving us the code was this one, the torque converter clutch solenoid. If you were attempting to um, flush them out, um, what we do when, when we do flush them out is demagnetize them. The fine metal in, inside the transmission um, or inside the solenoid will be magnetized. So if you don't demagnetize it, 
it'll just end up moving around on the coil you won't be able to flush it out as effectively but ideally the only way to uh, flush them out properly is to pull them apart there you go I've talked them all up and I actually noticed that all the ones that are in the outside were nice and tight the ones that were a little bit loose were the ones in the middle I've got the the new conductor plate and it's always a good idea to just put them side by side and just make sure they all look very similar this one's an aftermarket one you can get genuine ones or aftermarket so this zone has gone, opted for the aftermarket I'll just take these off as well all pretty tight and it's just a matter of doing the reverse of what you did before just gently push, push it into place and then we can put the new solenoids on now just showing you the differences in the conductor plates here this one's the one that they call the u-shaped you can see that it's got a u-shaped uh, hole there you can see that's a round hole one so if you put the wrong one on there you might if you put this one on the other one you'll have trouble uh, measuring getting the oil level right in it and I'll just show you on the new solenoids I'll have this little rubber boot that you can just remove and it'll expose those little contacts like that um, I always remove these little boots because if you have a look these contacts see how they're on an angle like, like so they're actually touching on the outer edge of that point on, on that angle bit and it goes inside that little slot so you've only got the contact touching on the left side and the right side these boots sometimes get in the way and reduce that contact just something I do it's up to you whether you keep them keep them on or or off before we put it on I just like to loosen this bolt here so it doesn't have that tension on that spring when we're putting it on you can take it right off it doesn't really matter actually I'll do that Putting the valve body back on, just make sure you align that selector shaft so it just fits into that slot there. And it's a good idea to put all the bolts on before you nip it up. Good idea to triple check everything, especially if you're not familiar with these kind of jobs. Um, when you're putting this spring back on, there is a little bit of flexibility in it, you can see. And I just tried and get that roller to be in the middle of that those little teeth. Sometimes when you're tightening it, it'll twist it. Um, another thing I think I mentioned earlier, these conductor plates, you've got two different types. You've got the ones with the full circle here, and you've got these U-shaped ones. Put that on the light. That's where the, the dip stip comes through. So if you put the wrong one on you might not be able to push the dipstick all the way down putting the sleeve back in just make sure you've got the new o-rings there there's two of them good idea to just smear them with a bit of oil before you put them on another thing to note um, you can see those little slots there they're slightly different got the old The old sleeve there, uh, the old plate, and you can see that one there. So that one's on the bottom, probably at about four or five o'clock. That's where that tapered one is, and you've got the, the straight one and the t another tapered one up here. At about eight o'clock or eight thirty, you've got that straight slot. So when you're pushing it in, you've got to line up those holes to go over all those little terminals 
and also another thing is to not over tighten that little 7mm bolt in there or you will break it pretty easily it's all plastic it's a little bit confined in there so I can't really film while I'm doing it but basically you get the idea here's another little trick I like to use a little bit of white out or liquid paper and you just mark it where that straight slot is so when you're fitting it in you can have that at about 8 o'clock you can see there's not much room there you've got that cross member there in the way so it is very confined to get it back in there on those the mercs are a little bit easier a little bit more access you can see the liquid paper is about 8 o'clock and then we just sort of wiggle it in don't force it in you got to try and get that seal back in and there it is it's just slowly going in you might even be able to see just under there above the valve body good idea to put it in before you put the the pan back on when that bolt is loose it is a little bit difficult to get the socket on it I've got it on there now I'm just going to do it up by hand and then when I get to the end I'll just wiggle that in a little bit I'll leave it loose wiggle it in do it up a bit more um, important that you don't damage those seals when you're getting it in or you're going to get a leak here can't stress to be very careful very easy to break um, when you're doing that 7 mil bolt up now I've blown out around here around the plug I'm going to just give it a squirt of um, anti-corrosion WD-40 or CRC and then you push it in and then that little tag you just as, as you just have a little bit of pressure pushing it in it'll catch on that winding there on that thread and it'll just pull that plug in by itself just wiggle it in it'll find its its own little spot and it goes straight in and another thing when these sometimes when these seals go on these you can end up with oil under your dash it'll squirt right up the loom it'll, it'll work its way all the way up up the loom and you'll wonder where this transmission fluid's coming from under your dash and as per usual I just like to leave these magnets resting on something just so they can work underneath and on top and around. The more surface area that is exposed to the fine metal is better. And it had a fair bit of metal in there so I'm just going to add one of our neodymium magnets to it as well. Also it's a good idea the pan seal just because it's been in storage for a while you just give it a little bit of a stretch all four ways it'll just sit on there a lot better heat shields back on all nipped up you can't over well don't over tighten them but um, these little brackets there or little stops they'll they'll hit up on the uh, pan rail so so the rubber's not really bent out of shape when you do it up another thing just to Make sure when you're putting that pan on, just sort of try and centre it forward and back, left and right, just so it sits evenly all the way around. Okay, now here we've got the fluid level dipstick. And basically what you've got up here, it, with the dipstick hitting the, the pan, you can measure up 10 mil, and that 25 degree fluid um, level is basically 20 mil off the bottom of the pan and then you can see it's 55 off the the minimum mark at 80 degrees C you'll have to either have a scan tool or a one of those infrared guns to, to measure it properly the oil will expand and for this reason it's important to have the right conductor plate otherwise that fillet, uh, dipstick won't fit through that hole so you'll you'll get a false reading it'll be hitting the top of that conductor plate instead of hitting the pan we're going to refill it with our Tritec LV low viscosity full synthetic transmission fluid that's what's recommended by Tritec on their website access to the filler tube you take the engine cover off you've got to take your engine oil Fill a plug out. 
and there it is right there. You just wiggle out the plug. Now they don't actually have a dipstick, the dipstick's a tool, so I've actually poked this one down before I put the pan on just to make sure it's going right through. And what we're doing is we're letting it bottom out and then we're going to measure 10, 10 mil will be the low 25 degree mark and 20 mil from the bottom will be the high 25 degree mark and we'll also mark the 80 degree mark as well. We just poke that down there and you'll see how far it goes down. This is the 1200 mil dipstick. You can see it doesn't go all the way in. So we've got to actually measure on it and just make sure that we get those marks right. So bottom mark at 25 degrees, top mark at 25 degrees and we've got the bottom mark at 80 degrees and the top mark at 80 degrees. So top mark here is at 20 mil from the bottom and the top mark here is at 65 mil from the bottom. And I'm going to pump in four and a half litres. Uh, that's how much roughly came out and that'll be a good starting point. Keeping in mind that we do have a vacuum pump so if we overfill it it's pretty easy for us to just suck a little bit out of the filler tube. It's a good idea to get it at the correct oil level because what happens as the oil expands it hits the spinning parts and it can aerate the oil. Just make sure you've got the right oil level at the right temperature. The thing we do to make it filling a little bit easier, we get a hose and we shove it right down to the bottom to the pan. Otherwise you'll get an airlock in the filler tube and it takes forever to fill. Four and a half litres to start with. Now I'm going to go in, start the vehicle, go through the gears a few times and check the oil level while the motor's running. let it pump the oil up, idling for a moment and now we're just going to select all the gears. And there we go, it took a couple of goes to get the reverse to actually move. bottom mark there. There's still a bit of oil in the filler tube, you're going to let that drain down, so we're on the bottom mark, so we need to put a little bit more in, because the temperature's probably up to about 30 degrees now. Okay, I'm just going to leave that dipstick in there just while I test drive it. So I'm just going to go for test drive now, and then we'll measure the oil temperature, try and get it up to 80 degrees. So I've put the scanner back on and we're just going gone to the live data and to actually measure the temperature it's in that white bit there, it's not focusing on it and you can see it now it's in drive or reverse measure the temperature We're on 86 degrees. Eighty-five, eighty-six degrees. So it should be a little bit above that top level mark. Fluid level you can see it's on about number four or five. And it should be up to number twelve. Or a little bit over number twelve. So I've got to top it up a bit more. bit hard to see but 
it's right on number 12 maybe a smidgen over we're over by about four degrees Uh, it's gone down about 83 degrees, 82, 83, and we're just right on the top mark there, maybe a little bit over. And I'm happy with that. So, I've just checked again, no fault code there. Now it's just a matter of putting the engine cover back on, putting the little plug in on the transmission dipstick, and it's all done. A little bit tricky getting the oil level right um, but it is doable if you've got a scan tool anyway i hope that's helped thank you for watching